Hello everyone. This isn't the news. <laughs> well. Maybe we can show you something new. Sounds like a good deal, right? Hey Yasmin, how's it going? How are you both? Pogo and Yasmin, how are you today? Think good? That's nice to hear. Tired but great. I'm with you on the tired part. Is it intentional to keep Pretzel Rock showing up on your bot? Oh! You mean on uh, on the screen? I'm not. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think I just haven't uh, cared about it enough. Got some work done, had McDonald's, and my tablet finally arrived. Ooh, nice! Have, have you tried uh, Fall Guys? Uh, Fall Guys already? So today I'm gonna do something ugly. I mean, C++ is ugly in itself, but... That's not it. It's the HP Pavilion X360. Ooh! It runs Fall Guys, nice. Let's have a look at that. Um, there should be a T Worlds, yeah. Can I practice my digital art? Yeah, and show it off in our Discord, hopefully. It's insanely cool looking. Oh, it's a convertible. Nice. Does it come with a pen? <laughs> you have to paint with a finger. Let's get check out what is happening. Get check out Insta Git, please. Yeah, one of the main reasons I got it. The pen came a bit unlike other tablets. Yeah, that's a good reason though. Okay, what are we going to do today? Um, I'm gonna delete code. And add code from the old repository, and then we'll work through the diff and see where where we need to change stuff. Um, that's kind of the brute force way to, to merging the two, two code bases, but it's still easier to to than going through it line by line and understanding everything in detail first. So let's. Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's do 
to my Insta today. I'm hardly as quick to teach me C++ while right? I'm only partially paying attention because family noise. Yeah, that that that's how I like to teach. Uh, not ten. Um. So basically, if if you know Rust, you should be. At least you should be able to at least somewhat read the code. Somewhat. Um. Okay, let's. Let's actually show something. Uh, but which which code base? Um, ah, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, you you should already know that there are uh, header files and uh, CPP files in uh, in C++. So the header files basically just uh, declare that there's something there and see CPP files implemented. It's very broadly explained. Um, yeah, Will, I'll add one to the Discord now. That on my Mac. Cool. Tell, tell me when you when you've added it, and I can I can show it on, on stream if you like. Okay, C basics. So the thing you're seeing here uh, is basically an include guard. That means uh, if this isn't defined, define it. So if you include the file twice, uh, it won't work because the first include will define. Uh, the value, so the second include doesn't do anything anymore. Uh, then the includes themselves, that's kind of like um, use statements, uh, use star statements in Rust. And then the basic. Okay, that can go as well. Edited it. Uh, Finally turning the Discord. Yes! Now we have a famous person on the Discord. Nice. Okay, you want me, want me to show it off? Oh, that's cute. Sure. Okay. Uh, where is the thing I want to press? Here's the thing I want to press. There's everything. Nice. I think that's cute. <laughs> don't don't get too scared. Yeah. I I should have I should have actually warned everyone. Sorry. Sorry guys. There's a ghost on the screen. I know. I know the stream isn't 18 plus. Ah. Uh, this is the least scary ghost ever. Well. <laughs> nice no, a cute ghost. I need to hire Yasmin for for our team. Yasmin and Space Fox. It's called Boo Boo. <laughs> Why doesn't my Discord have a logo? That's a very good question. Uh, my Discord is miss missing many things actually. I'll I'll add the Bob. Bob Champ as a logo. Okay, so um, next, next for C++. Uh, class is kind of the same as a struct. So struct and class are the same in, in C++. The only difference is uh, in a class everything is private by default. In a struct everything is public by default. Uh, this is uh, a derive statement, so uh, the class game controller CTF derives from I game controller. Um, I know I game controller looks like an interface, but C++ doesn't have interfaces, so only abstract classes and abstract functions and stuff like that. And then it's basically just a very uh, field 
declarations, uh, constructor destructor, and fun member functions. That's that's basically C++ stuff. Hey Aquafunkalistic, booty wop. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, so uh, the virtual is for, for a virtual function calls and the override means that we actually override the function. There should be virtual as well. So that that's that's C++ class basics. Uh, the next thing is in C++ the type comes first, then the name. And when you implement stuff, you write the name of the class or struct, then double colon, uh, you should know them from Rust, and then the, the function you're actually implementing. Um, other than that, yeah, if you have a pointer or something in C++, instead of using a dot, you're using an arrow uh, for the referencing the point. Uh, yeah, for the reference to the pointer. And I think that should be enough information uh, for people who know programming but don't know uh, C to get started. Oh, and if you call if you want to call the base function, you just do it like that. So the name of the base class, colon colon snap, and the implicit this pointer stays the same. Okay, I'm going to try to program C++ now, just by watching this. I mean... Uh, can't type. Let's make a toggle test. Gonna include IO stream to get input output going. Let's get our main function. Main always has to return a number. Some compilers allow you to don't write a number, but you always need to return a number. And if you write void main, it just compiles it to int main with return zero. So just make it explicit. Then we're gonna do standard uh, C out. Uh, no, um, the convention is C classes. Uh, C headers are uh, with and dot H, and C plus plus headers are without. So the old one would be plus the C version include uh, stdio dot H. So if you learn C or learn it earlier, you would use uh, standard I/O and printf and stuff like that. And I/O stream is just a more modern C++ version. Of that. And we'll do hello, hello toggle bit. I'm gonna use my macro I'm compiling this with, with seek might not work <laughs> That, that could actually be, yeah. Okay, what's my key binding for that? Yeah, the, the Vim run. Leader R? Compiled with sick? Nice. Ah, okay. This it's in my quick fix window. Okay, short explanation. That's that's where you get the the I/O functions from. 
Um, standard C out is an iterator. Or a stream. Uh, not an iterator, a stream. Sorry, I'm, I'm stupid. So, it's a stream and has the, the shift operator overloaded so that you can pipe values into it. So I can do hello toggle bit uh, 42, for instance, and it would work as well. And I can run. Hello toggle bit 42. So basic C++ isn't that hard. And if you don't use classes and stuff like that, so number strings is all the same. No, no, no. That's just um, standard C out takes multiple values. So how do I explain this? Okay. Um, it's probably will not compile. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it kind of does. Okay. So let's put let's put per, uh, parentheses around that. I know it looks stupid. I know it, it's, we're getting into Lisp territory here, but basically what you're doing is standard C out gives you a stream. Then you pipe a uh, hello toggle bit into it and it returns a stream. Then you pipe the 42 into it and it returns a stream and then you pipe standard end line into it. And then you're done. Okay, so it's not, it's not the same. It's just uh, the pipe. The pipe stuff uh, is actually overloaded for multiple values. Makes sense? Okay, that's good. So it's overlaid for multiple values. Uh, there's also, there is no let statement in uh, C++, but there is an auto statement. An auto statement is basically uh, a type inference. So you can do, the hardest challenge is going to be to put, huh? What do you mean? Putting braces in the next line. It's class, flop. Oh, you don't need to do that. What happened? Piscan AI with the raid. Hello and welcome. How are you doing? So S equals to that. So on and so forth. So you can absolutely do uh, braces in the same uh, braces in the same line. It doesn't matter for C++. Yeah, and auto is basically uh, let in in uh, in Rust. Hey Lord. And I think there is const auto, which is not really immutable, but read only. No, that's just coding conventions. The standard doesn't define anything about where the brace should be. I think this style is actually uh, more prevalent in, in C Sharp. But it could, it could be in C++ as well. I, I don't actually know that. But most, most of the time it's just going to be depending on uh, which team you're on. So some te teams write it this way. Uh, also, what I've seen sometimes is 
people who write it functions this way. Oh, come on. So you basically write the return type, enter, then the function. Um, stuff like that. All those horrible people putting the braces on a separate line. I mean, the main argument I heard for, for putting braces on a separate line is if you... If you basically need multiple per, uh, arguments or too many arguments, uh, it puts a, a nice separator between the function name and the, the variable. So if, let's say int a, whatever, okay, and I'm doing a int b, uh, that, that's one of the arguments I heard, is uh, it's easier to see... So if, if, you, if you do the brace on, on the next line, it's easier to see that this is a local variable and this is not. Which I don't think is a good argument, but it is what it is. What it is. I, I really don't care. So... Don't listen to Fisk, he's a Python programmer. No formatting tool? Well, there, there is a Clang format, right? Clang format. So let's save that. Clang format. Main.cpp, does it work? Oh. No decent MLR resin rust yet. I mean you can you can write them. I think he agrees with my anti-Python propaganda. <laughs> okay, I'm still gonna do something ugly here, uh in a moment. We'll go, we're gonna remove game server game modes probably everything in here we'll copy was <laughs> the booby streamer I'm not a booby streamer though, I'm sorry. Uh, the only thing you're seeing is my antenna, which is uh, still Twitch uh, allowed by Twitch TOS. I, I, I looked. So, sorry for that. Are you already hyped for tomorrow? I'm hyped for tomorrow. Game, bot antenna action. Um. Hey Beamstream! How you doing? You already you already done with your stream? Most people think the antenna is part of the headset, but it's actually not. Yeah, if I take the headset off, the antenna is still there. Uh game modes everything into I'm gonna do something ugly again and use my mouse. Can't believe I just got raided by Soding. Had like over 100 views from him in a raid. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's nerve-wracking, kinda. Uh, I I I know uh, I know that from uh, I think one day I was raided by Toggle, Beaconbot, and TJ. That was really crazy. I gave you my points a little bit the other day. But then you left. <laughs> yeah, he got overwhelmed uh, with with the points and had to leave. Some of them... Seven views is the optimal amount. Well, that depends. Some of them like the beamstream idea. I'm really happy today. Yeah, I like the beamstream idea as well. Wait. 
Uh, game modes. It's in game mode. That, what was in game mode? That age. What? I think 10 views is the best after that it just gets confusing. Yeah, kinda. I mean, I'm gonna pretend there are 10 views anyway, like you said. Uh, Beamstream.com is a site for... Uh, which lists uh, programming streams. So if you wanna check out uh, science and technology streamers and programming streams in general, uh, you can go to beamstream.com and let's actually do it on stream. How does that work? Uh, I think he queries the Twitch API, something like that. And uh, I think there is a bug. Okay. Uh, I, th I think I found the bug. Actually, I, I should be on this on this spot right here uh, because I'm definitely the most popular. But it's it's fine, I guess. It's fine. Uh, no. <laughs> Where are the ducks? Do you sign up or does it somehow fill the only programming? It goes it goes by tags. So if you tag by web dev or programming or game dev or something like that, um, you can also. Type in game dev and get all the streams uh, by game dev. You know what would be cool though? If you haven't already. Oh, you have already. Kind of. Oh, it's categories. Okay. Because I think that the clicking on the stuff didn't work last time. Okay, how, how are we doing in game dev? We are on place number... Here we are, even with a preview. Rocking the antenna. So it's a website that really should be a CLI app. No, it shouldn't. It should not be a CLI app. It's not only... The, the thing is, if you want to grow as a streamer, you can't only cater to the hardcore... Uh, for the hardcore viewers, you need to get views from elsewhere and CLI apps won't just won't do that. But the CLI app would be an added plus for uh, for others. Less web, more CLI. Uh, I disagree, but it's fine. Uh, Beamstream is not like Twitch. It just, it just filters streams and shows you them. So if, if you're doing streaming and you're doing a programming stream, uh, just tag it with programming and you're on there. So it's just for programming streams, basically. Yeah. Damn features. Okay, uh back to back to fixing C stuff. Um Can I search in here? Mm, game modes.h no game mode.h uh, there's absolutely nothing in here other, other than defines. Okay. I also thought about watching Beep stream today, but then I saw Angular in the title along the address and immediately decided against it. Yeah, you, you shouldn't be so quick to judge stuff. I mean, I also dislike Angular. Even though I haven't even used it. <laughs> so, uh, I, I do think React is, is way cooler, but as long as, as the product is cool, I don't mind. Um, 
Okay, what else do I need to replace? Source game server. Don't dislike Angular in particular. I dislike all this stuff because it's yes. Okay. Um, what do I need to remove as well? Uh, I think player should go. I think we should do player anew. I'll replace the player stuff. It's time. I mean, it's an upgrade. I wouldn't call it huge. <laughs> it's an upgrade though, yeah. That's... Mm, mm. It compiles to TS. Yeah, that's true. But that's like, if, if you say uh, ReasonML is still JavaScript, that's r just plain wrong. It's not JavaScript anymore. You should actually check it out. ReasonML is really cool. They also ditched all the, all the stupidness of JavaScript, uh, unlike TypeScript, which just built on top. So... <laughs> it's pretty huge, trust me. For those that use TypeScript and understand generics, it's crazy what you can do for safety. I don't... Uh, I understand what you're saying, but it's not that huge of a step from chess. It's just, it's just type checking on top. So it's it's still just JS plus plus. That's what I mean. There are there are languages like um, PureScript and uh, like I said, ReasonML, uh, which can do way cooler stuff with respect to type safety. So, but it's fine. It's I'm not arguing against TypeScript. TypeScript is fine. No, nobody should play use plain JavaScript anymore, except for beginners when learning or stuff like that. Uh. Okay, so that's gone. T world source. If you really want to make something to compile to chess, just use hex. It makes TypeScript entirely redundant. Yeah, but hex is never gonna happen. It, it doesn't have enough traction, it doesn't have uh, any really good features to distinguish it, distinguish it from other languages, except that it compiles to everything. So that's the only thing Hex got for it, otherwise it's just c -sharp. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe it's better now, I don't know, but... Put more C++ code on the screen hardline, I'm not learning. I have used Hex. I have used it long ago. Like I said, it doesn't have any traction, so it's it's just not, not gonna happen. Uh okay, let me let me first delete everything. <laughs> let me first delete everything so that you can actually learn something. No, I think it's, this is gonna be a terrible learning stream because I'm just trying to merge stuff right now, uh, which isn't really good learning material. Should merge knowledge into my brain. I mean, I can try. Argo install knowledge dash dash into toggle bit. Ah, didn't work. I'm sorry. I will learn through osmosis. Yeah, just, just, just sit on the Xbox and hope that you learn something. Uh, game controller needs to also go. <laughs> it's actually like your Xbox broken. 
Not even though some advantages of TypeScript type script are the macros, the removal of chess weirdness, the ability to do much more at compile times, such as conditional compilation and so on. Tags is insanely easy to integrate, so it doesn't even need to have much traction. Yeah, but ReasonML can do that too. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. There are other languages which have equally much traction and they even have cooler features and better features for type safety and everything. So. Hex is a nice project. I don't have anything against Hex, but rewriting in Hex is, for most pro projects, probably not the right choice. Um, okay, what else needs to go? Game world as well? Okay, let's, let's remove that as well. Come on. Is RM your merge command? No, no, no. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna like, like I said, I'm gonna do some something ugly. Uh, the ugly thing I'm doing is just I remove. I remove the old code, replace it with the new one. Uh, game, um, come on, game controller, so that I then can see all the differences uh, oh come on hands uh, game context game controller and game world is there something i missed Okay, I'm working on a GUI with hacks and it's super awesome since I can write my GUI in XML which past the compile time and turned into code. That way I can get to conveniently spit out many GUI apps like compile to JS native using Wix which is the... Uh, okay... I mean, I, I, I know many cool technologies that doesn't mean anything. I also was hyped. I was hyped for Hex uh, when I learned about it. I was hyped uh, for D when I learned about it, and it's not that awesome. It just compiles to many languages. That's the only thing it's got going for it. But like I said, you stick with it if you like. It's fine. I don't care about that. I just don't think it's uh, gonna get the kind of adoption you're hoping for. So did I, did I miss something? Oh, not git diff. Git status. Okay, these can go. So we don't need that and that and that and that and that. Status again. Okay. This is gonna be wild. Start with the game context. Um, because some of those will probably contain the whole uh, compatibility layer between 0 0.7 and 0 0.6. Uh, it's formatting stuff. Oh no. Damn raw diffs, I have no idea how to understand that. Yeah, uh, I'm probably just gonna open VS Code instead. Uh, because it makes it easier to merge. But... I just wanted to look. Try meld. Isn't that Python though? So which file over? Oh, it's the correct. 
file. The thing is, you can just do close that, close that, go to game context, have a nice diff, and uh, merge what you need. Can you just open VS Code in Vim? No, 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 no. I pressed uh, Windows Shift P to get uh, my, uh, my, what's it called? Running. It's got a ton going for it, even looking at just the syntax that's already my second favorite right after Rust and it's superior to Rust in terms of syntax in many ways, apart from the stuff that's completely impossible with a non-garbage collector language like Rust. It has much more like classes and way better macros. Yeah, but classes are bullshit. It meant... Okay, ne never mind. Uh, program in whatever you like. I, I don't mind it. It's it's fine. Uh, I think it's not a better language. Period. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. But I... What, okay, one, one thing I do want to say about it. I heard they had a, have a pretty good uh, game uh, engine. Which is kind of cool. Okay, so. I also don't think it's the best choice for many things. I also don't think it's the best choice for doing web stuff. Because there are other languages which do the same things better. But it's, it's okay, it's fine. It's great to be enthusiastic, but being too involved in what is effectively just a tool isn't anything but counterproductive and limiting in the long run. I mean, I, I kind of agree with that. There, f first of all, context matters. That's that's the most important part. It doesn't matter how cool the technology is, if you have a billion lines of old C code, you're not gonna replace it. Period. That's that's just how it is. So. Um, and you also need to, you also need to differentiate between, uh, actual programming language design stuff, which is what, what I'm some, uh, sometimes, uh, talking about, um, which, uh, uh, like, what are cool things, like design by contract and stuff, stuff like that, uh, or uh, proof systems or something like that. So there's, there's there's a lot of things we could do with languages which would actually improve many things. Um, on the other hand, there is practicality, so just getting to, getting stuff done. And if if people want to work with TypeScript because that's the language they know the most, and then it's fine. They're gonna use it. It's just just how it is. My current manager said something which always sticks to me now. Get it done. Don't care how. If you have something to be productive with, do it. That's why I choose Angular Rocket. It's, it fits me. Uh, like you then can make things with it. I mean, I don't completely agree with uh, with it doesn't matter how. You, sh you should obviously uh, try. You should you should check out new technologies and you should check out if, if that makes your life easier or better and stuff like that. But if you're saying just do X and everything will be better, you're probably missing something. That that's it. I've done more with hacks like making bindings for the things that can only be done in Python, so I can't do them in hacks. I want to limit myself in some terms. I'm willing to do anything to avoid ending up as a chess or pie dev. I mean, I may be wrong, but I think if you're sticking to Huxley, you're not going to be a dev at all, at least professionally. There are, there are a few companies who do hacks as game dev stuff, and if you get in, into them, that's fine. If, if, if you like the language, you have to get a job in that. But other than that, I I just don't see it. I could be wrong. I, I could absolutely be wrong. I just don't see it. You should explain your tech. The point is not being bound by one thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm also, I, I'm arguing very hard in favor of Rust at my current company. Uh, not because I think Rust is the greatest language, but because I know our problem domain. I know all the ins and outs of what we do. I know the problems we're having with our current code. I know all the bugs we're having. And 
knowing all that and having used Rust and knowing Rust, I I'm of the uh, I'm of the opinion that Rust is the best choice for us to move forward. So that's everything considered. It's not just Rust is a good language, therefore I use it. I mean, I think Rust is, but that's not <laughs> that's not the reason to, to choose something. Uh, I would rather not be a professional dev at all than do chess or Python for a living. The, the thing is, if you want to get into any job, you're going to get a job first that does fit what you want to do. So if you want to get into development and there, there are basically three ways to get into, in, into dev, okay? Um, number one is making uh, open source projects, networking, and uh, when you're done, go to a company, say, okay, I have 500 open source projects. You can look at them. That's my track record. Please hire me. That's number one. Number two is um, actual networking and someone gives you the job. And number three is just taking whatever job you have, get experience. And once you have, let's say, two years, three years, five years of experience, switch to a job that better fits what you want to do. And then you iterate on that. And that's the most likely uh, thing for most people. Which is why I most likely won't be a professional dev ever. I mean, that's fine too. That uh, <laughs> It's what, whatever you like, right? Okay, so let's actually fix stuff. Uh, we have on character dev. That's not needed. We have on entity. We have a tick. We have a snap. We have a can move. We have a do win check. We do not have an on character spawn. You could work in academia. Yeah, but ac academia is mostly. Uh, I'm depending on what you do, but academia is mostly Python right now, right? So I don't, I don't think that Lord MCT is gonna gonna take a, a, pi, a job doing Python, right? Also, I'm, I'm also not gonna uh, not saying you should absolutely love every language that is out there. Most of them are shit. I. I dislike JavaScript, I dislike C++. So, yeah, those aren't good languages. They are they are, they are objectively bad languages. But that's just from a language design point of view. And you have all the practicalities. I've heard of units that teach Rust. Yeah, but they're pretty new. Uh, I'm, I'm not even sure if, if Europe starts with Rust teaching. If anything, I'll probably be a Java dev, which is horrible. But with that, I at least have a ton of experience that can live with that. Hmm. I would do Java as well, as a last resort. So Java is actually my last resort language. I, I'd rather do JavaScript than than, uh, than Rust. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd rather do JavaScript than Java. What do you think the odds are that you will retain this perspective for the next 10 years? Do not clip that! Oh, and oh boy. I'm gonna get cancelled from Twitch. <laughs> Lol. Okay, I don't care about that. I have no web client because I'm a Muppet. Too bad, Togglebit, too bad. So... The game type. Unfortunately, pretty low, but I need to prevent my opinion from changing there. No, you don't. No, you don't. Annotation driven development. <laughs> yeah, you, you're just holding yourself back there. That's, that's everything you're doing. Like I said, you don't need to love all languages. That's not the point. Also, I think people need to uh, actually 
experience all the shortcomings of other languages. If you call something to like PyFormJS growth, then I want to prevent that. Yeah, that's but that's because you already formed an opinion on that based on whatever, and you just don't like it. And like I said, I don't, I haven't said you should start to like them. Just stop hating them. That's the only thing. I mean, even hating them is fine. Okay, hate Python. I hate Python too. The syntax is ugly. Nobody should do white space dependent imperative languages. I totally agree with that. But that doesn't mean that if someone does something in Python, it's it's bad because it's Python. You can you can write good code in any language and you can write bad code in any language. Hating holds no value. I mean, with Python it does. <laughs> in that in the driven development. <laughs> I mean, make make a T out of that. Then then I would be with it. Intent driven development would be my thing. Ah, uh, bear. I would do Java. Can you post it on the Discord as well? So that everyone sees uh, that I'm a Java dev now. I hope my boss won't see it. You're gonna make me do Java. Ugh. I think hating does hold a value since it prevents me from liking something I don't want to like. Yeah, but that's just... That's just like saying, yeah, it is bad because it is bad. That's circular reasoning. This was last place. It's everywhere already. Yeah, it's just circular reasoning. You you won't like something because you don't like something. That's stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to say it, but this is just stupid. Got a whole website of reasons why Python is bad. You know. Yeah, that I. Do not disagree that Python is bad. I just say you shouldn't hate on it this much. I I get I get choking about it. Whoa, what did I do? I get choking about that stuff. I do it a lot. Uh that I don't mind that. But uh like I said, I also hate on YAML. YAML is one of the worst document formats ever created. But if someone makes a product using YAML, I'm still gonna use it. I'm still gonna not gonna go and say, well, you're you're the worst because you used YAML. That's not not how things work. And that's the problem. It's not I, I don't care about if you hate stuff. I don't care if you like stuff. That doesn't that's not the problem. But just the all everything that's written in Python is bad because it's Python is wrong. The same way that everything is writ that's written in JavaScript is bad because it's JavaScript is wrong. Okay, well that discussion leads nowhere, I think. So let's let's continue to something more pleasant. Uh, C plus plus code merging. I think you're just going to have to arrive there yourself, wherever you're going with. I th I think he will arrive there, but but it's it's okay. Cause it has the lol text in there already. Wait. Okay. <laughs> I like that you're making basically the same jokes as me. The X driven development. I mean, I'm just doing copy and paste driven development right now. So. Okay, I think that's fine because it was in the other code base. As is. So. What are we doing here? Uh, let's 
Sega of Road Rip development. Yeah. Do you, you know that feeling when you Google something and you're on page 25 or something like that and you realize that not even Google knows what <laughs> what you want? That's That's gotta be the worst feeling out there. That's one of the things I hate. Uh, I did, except the last year, but six years before that, uh, research every day. So, only God knows what you want. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the stage I was on with some things. Because I, I had the idea to build a programming language which could change its own syntax kind of so ha have a good base for the programming language uh and have syntax layers on top of that but there is no research on that or, or at least not that many research you mean no 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 not lisp i mean uh let's say let's make a stupid example hi tommy let's make a stupid example let's say you have a language uh and the base is python and you don't like it, so you overlay Rust syntax on top. Like not writing a complete compiler, just writing an overlay which transforms it in internally to Python. So you can write with the syntax you like and uh, it will just work. Starlog? Is that the thing uh, with the internal representation? I think I've heard about that. Pinkalum, thanks for the follow. How, uh, by the way, how's it going? Uh, we're uh, still merging. No, no, not that the, the, the Python stuff was just... Uh... Okay. So there, there is TCL. You came from Business Raid? Oh, very cool. So there, there is TCL, which is an ugly language. Uh, that's not the TCL I'm searching for. Um... Oh, what's it called? Oh, not TCL. I'm stupid. That's that's. If in doubt, I'm stupid is the, the answer. Okay, TXL. No, it's uh, no. We're not. We're not gonna do the lottery. So TXL is basically. Uh, it's based on transformations. So, practical introduction, introduction, ugh, it's a PDF, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Still didn't check the UDF link of Discord, I'll answer ahead of time yet, yeah, no problem. So, you write stuff like that. So, you basically write grammar. Yeah, comic sense, I know, I know, I, I said it's horrible. Don't don't add me. I, I I know that. So, but you can do stuff like that. You can you can define a rule, and can say you replace that by that, and then it just does it. Okay, and so you can build a, a language to language transpilers with that. And I was thinking, um, seems like something JS could do. <laughs> wow, um, replace true by false. Yeah. And you can do pretty cool stuff with that. And I thought about doing a whole programming language, a language built on something like that. So where you have a base and then you just kind of like you're switching compiler frontends, but simpler. Have you made that up or is it a real fact? It's a real thing. Oh, cool. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Is reset, reset gone for good? Yeah. I think we can all agree that it's not useful in terms of, of aesthetics. Well, the no, the th the thing is, you can do advanced syntax stuff. I, I'm al I'm also not saying that it's for everyone. So it is useful to give good ah comic sense. Okay. I've said nothing. It's fine. <laughs> okay, last command. Okay, let's try something else first. Let's see if it compiles. Crazy stuff. I. Am I am I missing something? Uh <laughs> Absolutely god. Yeah. So Back, T volts, FD mute. Okay. Mute star to uh, instagib. No, instagib. Source game server also in the meantime. New bin. I don't actually. Oh, come on. As far as I can tell, um, Okay, now, now we're rimming. Now we are rimming. Have fun lurking, Yasmin. Okay, let's get rid of that. Base list dot age. Okay, what does what does mute do? Let's start with that. Um are muting. Okay, so game world is almost nothing changed. What? It's not as bad as I thought. Okay, it is as bad as I thought. 
Okay, let's get base list in here. Um, copy. T worlds. Store space. List into source base. Database. Oh, that's yeah. Um, where's the database from? Server game context. Source game server database. Okay, let's get all of that. Should actually be removed for this version, but merging is more important right now. Get something running, then we'll we still can remove all the stuff we don't need. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um. Start with the CMake list. This ugly thing. So we added game. I think mute.cpp and mute.h, right? We added database stuff need to see more methods no more merging <laughs> I'm sorry I'm gonna show you more methods soon um, database CPP and database H. No, no. And then we have to do the same thing for SQL, right? Database SQLite um, There was an H file I think and SQLite free X right Oh also an H file okay uh, did we add something else SQL Database stuff, listed age, already added the mute stuff, so let's build again. Uh, we are in entity.h, entity. Entity to H line sixty one. Uh, Game World has no member convict. Are you sure about that? Should save as well. Okay, I broke C make. Wow. Okay, 
that's gone as well. Uh, game mode.h, but I removed that, right? Oh, I forgot to save again. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I haven't re I haven't replaced entity. That's the problem. So let's copy uh, source game server entity. To source game server. Is it just Alloc now? CPP seems to be 70% compiled with build. Yeah, normally it isn't. So that's just the whole merging stuff that's going on and then actually finding out what's what's broken. Slash mem. So Just a look now. It's the Escalite stuff. instead I know why I'm confused Elok oh it's it's not Elok it's Melok now I have to Wait. I need to retrain myself to press Control S to save instead of con uh, Space W. Okay, it's getting worse. Project CPP T worlds. Let me look. What file is that in? I also did already something like that. So I merged uh, Unicode support for names into the Instagib server. System.h I don't want to touch the system files though. Crap. Okay. Source, game, server, base. 
No server, just space. No game, just space. Uh, system. And copy. Keyword source. Base. System. To source base system. Oh, it's just to space. Got it. Recompile. Okay. Let's just check the differences. And maybe we maybe we learn enough about how it works so we can actually fix it. Um Let's revert those. Discard. Swift entity. I'm still hoping to find a nice middle ground between checking the whole source code and merging line by line. But let's see how it goes. Okay. Let's get Let's get rid of mute as well for now. Copy to other directory, merge all, see what the fallout is. Yeah, so that's basically what I did. So I just uh, deleted everything I thought was uh, responsible for that. And now I'm... trying to merge that. So... Let's get rid of that. Um So the last time I did it it worked actually pretty fine. Okay. What is that? So it just uses alloc.h. I mean I can do that. I mean that's that's one of the most boring things you can do when programming. Just stupidly inputting stuff and see if it works or not. Okay, player H. There is no weapon game anymore. Okay. Is 
game context age C mute. Wait, CMake is still complaining though. Oh, the mute CPP, got it. Um, so mute. You know, you're gone now. You can't find neat things. I think it really helps with understanding stuff because you need to go through anything anyways and you see all the differences uh between the two things player No public. Am I missing something? Wait. Haven't I deleted character CPP as well? Delete C make. Yeah, that's understandable. Um. Game, server, character? No. Entities. Okay, let's just get rid of all entities and copy them back in from the other project. What am I doing? Game, server, entities, um, star, to source. Oh, there was a hydrate earlier. I, I completely missed that. Uh, cheers. Sorry for not drinking enough. I'm gonna be a re responsible uh, programmer from now on. CMAC has no problem. Weapon, ga weapon game conflicts with previous declaration. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna refund you the points on that one. I'm sorry. How do you refer the class instance in the class? This is self. Uh, it's this. I mean, I'm also not sure if you actually need to use this themselves. So, I think you can just type the name. Let's go to player.h, uh, player cpp. See, like, this This is inside of a class, uh, class instance. And you just write the name. I think... I think it's possible to write this dot. Or, I think it's this... Arrow, something like that. But it's better to just just ignore it and just write the name instead. 
it imp implicitly does the right thing. Because yeah, we, we still have a problem. Um, in player.h. In player.h. And it is weapon world. Weapon world. <laughs> weapon world. So it's defined in character, so I don't actually need this. C++ business is easy, got classes for days now. <laughs> I mean, C++ also supports multiple inheritance if you want to really get uh, make something crazy. You know Python, so you should already have the oop down. It's arguably similar. So, weapon rifle. Where is weapon rifle defined? That's fun, I'm going to reproduce an error now that I know how to cause in Python. If you can make a class in JavaScript in Python, you too can make a class in C++. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Crazy to put a semicolon after class declaration. Yeah, but how else is the compiler supposed to know? Right? <laughs> Tickle aside. Oh boy. Where are my weapon types? Or am I just stupid? I've, re I've replaced the character, right? I replaced all the entities. Come on. Weapon grenade, weapon rifle, weapon ninja. Undelete, undelete, undelete. Where, where is this defined? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, weapon ninja. Come on. Find me some ninjas. Am I in the wrong folder? No. What's it? 
Okay. Gonna do something crazy here. Gonna open VS Code and search with that. Web Pen Ninja. Kinda confused now. Vim user using VS Code for searching. You should run. Yeah, I did. I did, and it didn't find the thing I was searching for. And now I used Visual Studio, which also uses Rip Grab. And I somehow thought that would be make it better, but it didn't. So I'm sad. <laughs> I I have absolutely no idea what why that's not defined. Um Shame on you for installing an external editor. <laughs> Mom, I'm getting bullied again. <laughs> no, I don't I don't mind. Um Let's search for ninja. Can't be that many. Pac-Man minus R will do. I need more points so we can get a monkey type. <laughs> My keyboard is faster than yours. I think that depends on, on the language, right? Hate the Swiss network pie. Let's see. Data source network fine. Um So go to the top. Rifle. There's no rifle in here. Suddenly, monkey type tests the key, but not the user. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did. Did you get the clicky one, toggle bit? Did you get clicky keys or clicky as all? You see, that's the problem. I have cherry. I have cherry browns. No clicky, so I can type faster. It's the, the, the tiny bit of, of uh, uh, what's the English word? Uh, the tiny bit of resistance that makes me faster. Yeah, brown is faster than blue. I like clickiness, but I'm normally so good cherry red. Yeah, I got uh, my first keyboard. With it, this thing, a uh, raper, crap, uh, and that click is help. Just typing stuff. It's still connected. Oh. That's clicky as hell. But sometimes nowadays I like to just work without headset on, and. It kind of annoys me, to be honest. So it's it's cool, 
I have an insanely clicky uh, keyboard for uh, if I need to go somewhere by train. It's a, it's a small one, but it's extremely loud. <laughs> I like this to sound fast. You don't have to be fast. Ah, you <laughs> have to break it to assume first. It's just just a typewriter connected to a PC, right? Uh, where does the weapon rifle come from? Okay, let's let's check out content pie. Content pie. <laughs> oh, oh boy okay no oh come on <laughs> Crazy stuff. Um, okay, weapon, weapon ninja. There's also no ninja. Oh, it's an underscore. Weapon Ninja Laser Grenade Shotgun Gun uh, Directly on top of Ninja Okay Oh come on Uh, yank, insert, control V. So can we rebuild it and have a rifle now? Babbage was the first lead hexer. True. No, we can't. I do have a weapon world though. When we used to go to Babbage's at the mall for computer games, those were the days. I'm suddenly feeling extremely young. Thanks for that. Uh, 
Have I just become GameStop? Ah. Uh, find weapon world. It's nice to know. Nice trivia. Okay. We need to think of something different. Uh that's not gonna not gonna work, by the way. So that means everything I did was useless. What do we need to get rid of? Uh, player. Okay, CTF can stay. What's with projectile? Gonna get rid of projectile, I think. They used to sell consoles and computer games. Wow. <laughs> we had software, etc. as well. It was cool, but Babbage just swallowed them. I didn't even know what Babbage's was, so... And I only was in a game store once, <laughs> for that matter. Okay, what are you complaining? What, what trial is that? Character. Let's start with character. After like nine, 1994 and 1996, somewhere in the Babbage's quit being too useful. Okay. Uh, Because, but then you could literally go in a Walmart or Kmart and buy the same computer games for cheaper or just dial up the internet. I remember dial up. That was not a good time. CPIP over PPP. <laughs> yeah, that dial-up was horrible. I I remember uh, downloading stuff on dial-up, and you would wait like hours for stuff, and then it would just disconnect in the last second, and everything was gone. So. <laughs> Uh, ha, ha, ha. Okay, I'm gonna reset that manually. The database stuff can go. Flag CPP. Okay. Slip? What is slip?
the CTF stuff alone. The lol text we're gonna leave in. Slip of serial network protocol, a serial line internet protocol to be correct. Oh. This is nice. Had issues to the added compression. I mean, uh, I once was at a, at a company fixing uh, their network that was like eight years ago or something like that, and they still had token ring. So, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. T I mean, TCP. I mean, it, it wasn't about having users, it was just an old system with old PCs that nobody wanted to take the money, uh, nobody wanted to spend the money for upgrades. And basically, if if you went, if, if, if you walked, uh, if you walked, uh, crap, uh, if you walked too fast near the computer or near the network, the whole uh, network would collapse sometimes because everything was was uh, really brittle. So uh, terminators coming off and stuff like that, and they basically it was uh, the machines which did the preparation, uh, the, the PCs which did the preparation. We're on token ring, then it got to a connect uh, converter for TCP IP for normal Ethernet network, which went out to newer production machines. It was it was really curious. So we'll play our CPP. Okay, you know what? Gonna get all of that. What's it, what's wrong with laser? Okay. Gonna get all of that. I wanna just revert it somehow. Yeah, this is a 1991 pre-router hub internet. <laughs> An ex-coworker of mine told me how they set up the first LAN party uh, with token ring networks and stuff. And if they moved wrong and the cable was, they they touched the cable, the whole the whole network broke down and stuff like that. Which is insane if you think about it. Touching a cable and your network goes down. Uh, yeah. One of the first computer gigs I ever had was setting up a server and internet for a smallish financial company. Okay, cool. And it was talking green. 90s. Oh, <laughs> I mean, we. When I when I went to vocational school for for network techniques, so so, I'm I'm a trained uh, IT technician basically. So I have no formal education in programming, and we had a test where we needed to design an office building. So everyone got an exercise with an office building and what you need to do. Uh, the office, office layout was literally one server computer, boss computer for workstations. Yeah, token rig is fine for that. I mean, at that time, probably now you, you wouldn't do it. So, uh, basically, you, you get an exercise and there was something like, uh, I don't know, you have uh, free, uh, free office building, uh, you have one office building, you have three rooms. Um, 
Let me just plug everything into the router. Yeah, router for everything. There was a time where a router would be just too expensive, so you would have to think about if you want to have a switch or a hub or stuff like that. Okay, so, so, so basically you needed to uh, do the cabling and uh, make a network plan and stuff like that. And uh, one, one, of, uh, one of the students had uh, two, two uh, what's it called? My, my English is breaking again. Um, wait. I'm too too broken right now to think in English. Uh, oh my god! I'm okay. I'm stupid. So uh, basically, two floors, uh, and the top one was no, the, the the bottom one was server stuff, and the top one was was uh, for the workers. And he did everything correctly. He put the switches where the switches should be, the router where the router should be, and so on and so forth. But he forgot to put a cable from the top floor to the bottom floor. And the teacher asked him uh, how did he get the data from the top floor to the bottom floor. And his answer was, without, without even thinking about it, uh, well, they just use USB sticks. And he didn't uh, get an F for that. I think he got uh, like the second or third worst. I think the second worst uh, notes uh, mark for that. Uh, because it, it, at least it was, it was a solution. It was some kind of solution. It was a bad solution, but it was a solution to get the data down there, which is kind of cool. Uh, okay, I've missed so much while babbling along. Hubs. Now we just plug it. Okay, I had fun building the layout for those because I had to figure out a lot inside. Like you go in knowing how to switch for one server. And figuring out how to actually make it all fit and work. It would work perfectly for one to eight hours it would take to run the Ethernet. <laughs> I mean that, that that's that's in a time where you need to consider the length of cables as well. Like really consider the length of cables because collisions and stuff. That was really your thing. <laughs> Oh, you mean, ah, I, I did that once in, uh, at the, at the, at the factory with the token ring, I had to make, make an, uh, a cable because the old one was broken and it was about, uh, five meters in the air. So, uh, <laughs> that wasn't fun. Okay, I'm gonna... Is there a fast way to get that? That's not what I wanted. It's fun when they say we already have Ethernet wired in the building. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I always press the wrong things, come on. Okay, screw that. Screw it. Uh, when you get there and it's literally all level 2 or cat 3 and you need at least cat 4, 5, cat 5, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. 
Okay, build up H. We we get to uh, do the cabling in the office building once, and it's base. So so we we needed to put the cables into a, a casing, so not make the the, the the plastic onto it. So just that's, that's just the casing where you, you take the wires, put it in, and then you have a, a tool to put the wires into it, and. I don't know, there were about 50 of them and none of them labeled and we had no equipment to test them. And just by chance, there was a, a, a telecom guy in there with, with, uh, with the right equipment to measure which cable is which. And he would stay half an hour, an hour longer than he actually needed to be there and helped us with labeling all the cables, which is really nice. So... Thank, thanks to that telecom guy. He went in the server room and cut everything. Yeah. Am I missing something? Okay, let's discard everything. Oh. Back to step one. Now comes the really bad part. Manually merging stuff. And why is it so white? Oh. Is there... Uh, thanks for the dark scheme. Racist. <laughs> I mean, it's really not not good to look at. Project CPP. T worlds. Other. Uh. Other oh, home project CPP Instagib pair. Uh, 
This is so bad. Do we need to restart maybe? No. Okay, other other div tools we can use, except melt, because melt is is too wide for me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh come on. Mm. CPP instagip. Okay, let's just run it again. May maybe magically it works now. Uh, LAN. So we still do not get assigned. Honestly, VS Code is where I have handled a fair bit of mergey boys in the last couple of years. Yeah, I do like merging in VS Code, actually. But now that the, the hardcore approach with just deleting everything didn't work. Why CPP server? Uh, because the base source is in, in C++. I'm not writing a, a server myself. I'm just uh, improving upon what's what's already there. By the way, Onetsan is a very cool name, and I know uh, <laughs> I, I really like the movie. The thing is, we could we could actually rewrite everything, but I'm not sure. If that wouldn't just be a waste of time. I just need to get the spawning ready. Let's try it. I have no idea how I just deleted that, but whatever. So which one which one is the correct one? The bottom, the top? Do you think it's the top? <laughs> 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 
Phaeton endured all the C++ we did. And now, now, now I'm just wanna, I just wanna change my theme. I'm not even doing anything with that. Okay. Hi, by the way. So let's insert that, delete all that. Let's run melt again. Yeah, it still looks ugly though. <laughs> you just got here to do nothing? Oh, okay, understandable. Uh, so the thing is, the thing is I can't move. I'm hardly and I made us look at full screen white and I thought it was your stream for a moment. <laughs> Rules, wow. Yeah, I, I heard Peyton Rules got a, a, a big raid from that uh, toggle bit guy. Have you heard about that? I somehow removed spawning of players. I installed Dagma just for you. That's very nice. But it looks basically the same. <laughs> You shouldn't do it for me, do it for your sanity and your eyes. So, this is where character starts. And... Sounds for weapons, great sound. It's also great sound. Give ninja tick. So C++ you inherit from two different classes with the same method name, how do you differentiate between them? Uh, I think that's the main problem with that, right? C++... Oh, you know what? Let's not Google it. Let's... Let's go for a toggle test. Open. Get creative. So, uh, why are your classes construct? Uh, Asi Minklio Pot. Cleopotosrepte Kiefisanka. Nailed it. Hi, hi, Space Fox. How are you? 
How are your studies going along? Extract the C and still the C++ thing. Well, okay. Uh, I think I explained that today already. In C++, there is only one difference between struct and class. A struct is public by default. So, uh, if I do int a, that's a, a public field by default. If I change that, let's let's actually show that off. Um, so a a a a a. Standard. Okay. So that works. Now I make a class out of that. And suddenly it doesn't work. That's the only thing that's changed. Everything else is the same thing. So. It's just a matter of if you want to have it public. Uh, the it, it is the same thing. C++ difference plus struct. So in, in C sharp, for instance, a class is always a reference type and the struct is always a, a, a value type. So pass by reference or pass by value. In terms of language, except one little detail, there is no difference between struct and class. So, basic, it's basically the same. The only difference is you don't specify the visibility, public, private, or protected of the members. They will be public in the struct and private in the class. So that that's that's everything. Why do we have it? I don't know. That's that's C plus plus for you. Okay. So we will include string. Yeah, prob probably, probably. I do not want to see my wiki. Thanks a lot. Um, gonna standard string do stuff. Uh, turn return a. Well, that makes no sense if they aren't the same thing. I mean, a C struct and the C plus plus struct are not the same, right? That's true. A C struct can't ha have methods. I think. Okay, so yeah, and sees is it's just data. Uh, wait, I don't need that here. What am I actually pressing the whole day? Something like that, I think. So that's B now. They made classes to be pure and hold both. So now I can do C, C, C. And set C out. So this thing great, learning for computer networks and data security. Ooh, nice. Thanks for the follow on it, Sam. Yes, that's that's basically what you get. And hydrate twice, let's hydrate twice.
That was twice, by the way. Um, so what can you actually do about that? I think you can obviously just... It's not what I wanted to do. Um... Member found in multiple base classes. Let's go to the Microsoft Docs just to, to annoy some people. Does that work for this as well? Okay, so that's how, how you uh, disambiguate. it. <laughs> because why not? Should print A and then B. <laughs> and you thought Rust syntax was bad. <laughs> No, that's... It's stupid. It, it really is. So there, there are no excuses for that, but whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> I did C++ for years and never saw a struct with me methods attached to it. Attached? It can be done, but nobody does it because it's naughty. It's not. It's the same as a class. There is no difference. It's in, it's in your mind because... Because people actually think that there is a difference between struct and, and class. And to use struct mainly for data and to use class mainly for, well, class stuff because they think it's different. But it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it's the same anyway. But yeah, don't do that. Just don't use that. Just just use, use normal struct and be done with it. Uh, don't forget, kids, always put using namespace standard in your main. Okay, can we get a timeout for bear? That's... that's... No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna allow that in my chat. It's, it's not even funny. It is funny. Always put, put uh, using namespace at the namespace you want to use in your header files. Understand the, uh, that they are the same, but if you use struct like a class, your fellow C++ programmers will beat you to death with hammers. I don't make the rules. I mean, it's understandable. Uh, I know a few people in game dev who will would actually disagree uh, because they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Space fix with the timeout snipe, nice. Hey Ma, I forgot his password too. Wait, did you did you forget your password twice? <laughs> Am I understanding that correctly? Okay, anything else toggle bit you wanna know? Any other crazy, crazy C++ things you want me to, to show you? I mean, you're tempting me to write a program where I use only structs for objects and classes for pure data. Where I mark them all as public. Only once, two is for the memes. Okay, got it, got it. Nice, nice. But I don't have friends. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're watching each other's streams, so we're basically friends, right? Kind of. Okay, so no C++ uh, questions anymore from anyone. Okay, let's let's do something else. Um, I'm gonna take a short break. Uh, in the meantime, you can think about stupid C++ things you wanna. <laughs> You want me to show you 
and that will do that. So be right back. And I'm back. Okay. My chat just showed me that I reconnected. Have I missed something? According to my bot, I haven't. Yes, I have missed something. What did I miss? What did I miss? We sold pictures of you. Do I get a share? Do I get some of the money? Or uh, do I not? For charity? <laughs> okay. Um, um, uh, keep the money then? Uh. <laughs> I don't think you could you could sell my my pictures for charity. Wouldn't work. Is Bear still here? I don't know. Why does he have to have so such a long name? Bear how? Says. I hope I don't mistype. Oh, his name isn't in the chat. Uh, was it? No, I don't know. Can't shout him out. I don't know. I don't know how his name is spelled. Oh, I do know how his name is spelled. I have it on my second monitor, I'm just stupid again. Cool cow. Cool cow. It's not a normal cow, it's a cool cow. Too stupid to type. He's gonna... Um, you should all follow uh, bear, uh, bear and check out his stream tomorrow, where he installs Arch on, on Bear Linux. Uh, on Bear Metal, not on Bear Linux, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, st I still don't know why stuff doesn't work. So, 
I can connect perfectly fine, but I don't get assigned a team. That's basically my problem. And I tried to do a, a merge of the C++ code today, and I failed miserably. Um... What else can we do? The thing is... Thing is, I have no idea why it doesn't work anymore. I mean, I, I removed the old team code. That's that's for sure. But it still makes doesn't make that much sense. I still don't know why it doesn't work, it's gonna be on my tombstone. <laughs> I can show you something different in the meantime. I uh I did I did something semi-stupid again. So if if you have the problem that you sometimes uh let's say you're working on a Rust project, you wanna Let's actually make a Rust project for that. Uh, fails to compile. Let's get rid of all of that. So basically, you're you're having a value somewhere, uh, some condition is false. Okay, that's that's defined somewhere else in your code. Now you have an if some condition. Uh, print line. I am here. Okay. Not cargo test. Cargo run. Okay, so you're doing, uh, you're running everything, and it obviously doesn't trigger because some condition is false. Okay. Now, let's say you want to test something and you want this to run. Okay. So now you can do uh, temp true, which is a macro. Let's hydrate. Cheers. <laughs> do you synchronize that? Do you synchronize your, your requests? So now I can do cargo run. And now it doesn't work. What? <laughs> no, we wouldn't. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Oh, I'm, I'm just... Okay, I'm just stupid. Uh, that obviously can't run. Okay, that's the thing we want to run. So we... we that, that's something I sometimes do. I just say, okay, ignore everything else. And actually, let's make it proper. Yeah, that's that's what I meant with making it proper. 
put it in front where it belongs. So it's, it's basically test code, okay? You're saying, okay, I got a bug, I need to test something. I want that to be true, okay? So you put it in here. Normally you would just write true. So if true or something else, and it would always evaluate to true. Now, if I cargo run it, it, it obviously prints I am here. But, uh, let's cargo clean for a second. But, now I can set an environment variable, which most CI uh, servers actually do. And now if I try to compile it, it says, hey, you did something that shouldn't be in production. Uh, and the CI server actually catches that you did something which shouldn't be. So if you have that problem sometimes, or if you want to test something and want to make sure it doesn't compile on your CI server, uh, you can do stuff like that. So that's, that's basically the crate I did today. And the crate has, you can do it with structs. So you can have structs that only will compile in uh, on your local machine. You can do it with functions so that they only compile on your local machine. And you can have it fail in multiple ways on your, on CI. You can insert complete code blocks in there with fail on CI and temp code. So, and, and so somehow the download rate is, is, is growing faster than my stream. So <laughs> no. I'm just kidding, of course. Um, what, are, what are we going to do now? Are we continue our C++ journey? I think I think I might I might uh, end the stream early today and get a few things done. Uh, we're streaming tomorrow, by the way. Tomorrow is Dwarf Fortress Day uh, for Tommy Luco because he wanted to see it, and for Togo Beat because he wants to see it. So if you're if you're a Dwarf Fortress fan. Or if you want to learn Dwarf Fortress or something like that. Where's your key? It's not the end until your keto invades. <laughs> if if uh, if I can't end until my kid invades, uh, you would have to wait at least nine months because I don't have one and I would have to make one. And <laughs> yeah, let's 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 not. <laughs> Let's check who's streaming. French. In JS we trust. Oh, trust, trust, got it. Um, don't stream that, but you get kicked off Twitch. <laughs> um, Twitch TV. Yeah, no, so the thing is, like, I can just prepare a few things off stream. Let's see. Tatsu is streaming, Anthony is streaming. And Ash Fox is streaming, who else is streaming? That's it. So, let's check all of them. Okay, that's Dyson Sphere program, whatever that is. Then we have Anthony writes code and Ash Fox with Try Hackney. Okay, so Anthony writes code or Tatsu? Who wanna who you wanna raid? You wanna see gaming or you wanna see uh, Anthony writes code? You wanna see Ash Fox? 
It's fine for me too. Can can you do a poll? On Tetsu, Anthony and Ash Fox? Who we're gonna raid? Get your votes ready. What do you want to see? Gaming, hacking or programming? Wait, Anthony does programming today, right? Yeah, pre-commit work. So we have one for Ash Fox. Everyone else, no opinion? Okay, entrance is already starting. The other one. <laughs> That's not nice, Space Fox. Tetsu is cool. Okay, so it's Ash Fox. Got it, got it, got it. The vote has decided. Okay. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, sadly, we didn't get as much done today as I would like. I would want wanted to make the server working, but it somehow somehow failed. So, yeah. Let, let's, uh, I'm gonna look into it, maybe, maybe next stream we'll do, uh, we'll have some, I'll have something to, to show off. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm off, you can also check my Discord. Uh, yeah, and tomorrow is gonna be gaming stream day, uh, because we haven't done one in a long time. It's gonna be gaming stream day from Linux, so a bit of Dwarf Fortress, may, maybe some other cool games, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So, thanks for joining. Have a nice evening or day, and see ya. Bye.